Do you ever wonder about the neat artifacts you can find inside an Army-Navy surplus store? Come walk with history and I'll tell you about one of the oldest ones in Norfolk, Virginia. So I'm at M&G Sales Company Incorporated in Norfolk, Virginia, and this is an Army-Navy surplus store located at 2609 Granby Street. Yeah, this is a M&G Sales Company Incorporated, commonly referred to as the Army-Navy surplus store. Yes. Uh, the letters M&G are the initials of our founders, which were uh, my uh, ancestors, basically. Oh. So it would be my grandfather and my great uncle who founded the store in 1946. Awesome. Uh, right after World War II, where surplus was a new industry. Yes. And my grandfather had operated several successful businesses up to that point, but he was always looking for something new to challenge him, and this is what he started. Uh, my grandfather and my uh, uncle initially opened down on Front Street in Norfolk. Uh, it was an old warehouse, cotton warehouse, until this bu building here on Granby Street became available. Awesome. And my father was uh, in college at the time off the GI Bill. He'd just come back from World War II in Europe uh, in the Army. And so they brought him in as well. And uh, we've been doing this ever since. So M and G is their first in names? Or yeah, last names? it would be uh, Max and Mike and Gilbert. The M is two. Okay. Gilbert was my father. And okay. He, so that's kind of where the G, because they knew he was going to be coming into this too. Okay, so that's where the M and G comes right, from. Right, exactly. So surplus, you said, was a big industry after World War II because people were coming back from war and having all of their supplies and uniforms and wanting to like just kind of like not get rid of them but like resell them or put them to other use is initially that kind of that's what it isn't what it was that's yeah. what it's that's what it's become now but okay. the idea was the uh, industry here in the states had been really ramping up production because they didn't know when the war was going to sure, end and they it could have so gone much. five years yeah. more ten years more and they, sure. they wanted to not run out of anything yes but when they dropped the bomb and everything else and the war suddenly ended they had warehouses full of stuff already been paid for by taxpayers and everything else uh, so they decided to liquidate it so that's when they started auctioning it off to the public oh, in big amounts so that makes sense the average joke couldn't buy that stuff it took someone you know with resources to and storage to be able to take that amount in, in such large quantities yes. and be able to break it down. Oh, so that's yeah. how we initially started, buying a large lots of items. And, that had never been used. Right. I see. And now it's grown into a resale kind of right. idea. We have, they still do auctions, but it's a whole lot different. We haven't done it in like 30 years, and we don't need to because uh, plenty of stuff just manages to find us. Absolutely. Has it always been this big? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a very big store. There's a lot of things to see here. Well, we can say always, but my frame of reference only goes back to the early 60s. <laughs> I, I don't see. remember beyond that. And you run it with your sister. I do. And what is her name? That's Laura. Laura. Uh -huh. And it's Friedman as well? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, awesome. So you and your sister both own this place Oh, together. yeah. You know, we both have our own strengths, and it, you know, without one of us, it, the other one wouldn't be able to make it work. So it, very it, it, cool. Good now, synergy there. Yes. And the way I have come, I came to know this story is, I don't know if many people know about um, your daughter, Rachel. Right. The young woman you're about to meet knows this all too well. She had everything in front of her. She was about to get married and start a new chapter in her life, and then everything changed in an instant. My name's Rachel Friedman and I'm 28 years old. And she was the girl who was having celebrating her bachelorette party and got pushed into a pool and hit her head and became paralyzed. Right. And then the, she, she got married and she just lived her life, but in her new condition, because she's a quadriplegic now. Correct. And she just talks about what that transition was like and how life is different now, but how she is soldiered on. And now she has a daughter who's the same age as my daughter. And that's what brought me to the store because I follow Rachel and she was asking for Christmas cards for her daughter. And I brought the card in here. And then when I saw the store, I was like, oh my gosh. And we started talking and- It's a natural. I yes, mean, so it was I just mean, so amazing. What you do is so amazing too. <laughs> I enjoyed you know, hearing what you do. So that Thank was- Thank you. you know, that was fun. Your favorite artifact that you have seen, if you, I know you probably have more than one, but that you have seen come through the door and maybe it's your favorite for maybe what it did or maybe the story behind it. And you might have one of each, but would you like to tell us about that? 
that? There's one that sticks to mind, and it's not, it's not that long ago, maybe a few years, but we received some stuff from uh, an, aviation, an aviator's estate, mm. and in it were a lot of intelligence documents and surveillance photos of Japan, where the bombs were going to be dropped, and you know the atomic bombs, and the, uh, the factories, and all wow. that kind of stuff. Uh, that ended up in a museum, too, but it, that's... It was kind of, it was just in a bunch of stuff. And yes. It was uh, really, uh, you know, fascinating to see something that, you know, you weren't supposed to really see. Yeah. So. It's just like the um, Antiques Roadshow or anything like that. When, as you start to research and go through those old things, you find stuff that this is a big deal and more people should know about this. Well, so. interestingly, people will come in here wanting to sell stuff because perhaps a family member died or they sure. need space to downsize. Sure. And, and they look around and they see we have a lot of something, so they think I, they want to bring me that, the same something. But sure. I've got plenty of that. Sure. So I always tell them that it's, uh, you know, the, the personal items and the one of a kind. I say sometimes it's a picture, sometimes it's a book, and, you know, yes. it's not going to make anybody rich, but it makes it interesting because it's The provenance, unique. yes. Yeah, the provenance, yes. Awesome. So what, is, so what would you say is your biggest seller? Like, what do you sell the most of here? Well, it's, it's evolved over the years. We always still sell cargo pants, BDUs, that sort of thing, <laughs> yeah. because the military needs them, the Absolutely. kids like them, the mm -hmm. people, the veterans like them, that sort of thing. But a lot of, in the way of work clothes and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. uh, coveralls, work sure. shoes, that sort of thing. Boots, yeah, exactly. things like that. Very cool. We have a lot of different markets. I mean, like I say, we got the teenagers coming here. They'll buy it for fashion or just, interestingly, some of them are really interested in history and, and um, the, again, provenance that, yes. that you mentioned. Yes. So, and then we get we could do a lot of uh, sales to people in uh, theater, yes. movies, yes. Uh, plays, yes. commercials, all that. So they need, you know, props and uniforms and stuff like that. It, it, you know, it varies. And actually, behind you right here, this cast iron, people don't expect to find that in here, but it's a real draw. It's a really, really large selection that we're proud of. That's awesome. So you had talked about costumes. So you actually have some uniforms here that I've never seen, like Civil War. How far back do you actually go with the military you have? Like, do you go all that back Revolutionary War? Like, what kind of stuff do uh, we, we do? We do a lot of that in the, mostly like the old documents and mm -hmm. publications and yes. that sort of thing. As far as uniforms, they, they usually haven't been saved as well. Yes. So it's That's hard true. to get anything back beyond World War I or Spanish-American War. Yes. I know that you have helped some museums, and mm -hmm. specifically MacArthur Museum. Correct. So how they put things together to kind of show their patrons something from history. And I know one of the things the MacArthur Museum has done is the footlockers. Right. So they bring the footlockers into high schools and middle schools, and they put a footlocker together for one war. So and they Spanish. do that so that they can get their hands on it. Yes. Because so, that's how young people learn, not yes. just you telling them about it, yes. but experience it. See, I don't have to tell you that. Exactly. So and so, But they'll get the footlockers from here. And they'll get a lot of the artifacts they're using from here. So that's one way right. you're like supporting the museum industry. And you've got the uh, the USS Wisconsin here as well, yes. and they've got sort of living uh, museum type on, uh, thing on the uh, ship as well, and they they get stuff from us as well. Okay. Thank you so much. It was very nice right. to have this conversation with you. Appreciate it. Thank you. This is a great pin display they have here and again any kind of operation you were a part of or a group you were a part of or these are designator different types of wings you get different types of wings um, different kind of platforms you fly of course different militaries have their different wings the most important ones are the Navy wings <laughs> they're the ones that matter the most so they're at the very top no joke. <laughs> but flags 
I love nose art. That's one of the things you can't really see these pins very well, but I love nose art. And I used to walk around and take pictures of planes in their nose art. They have military aircraft. They have different kind of um, units people were part of. These are not um, what you would wear on your uniform exactly, but medals and ribbons, but all different types of pins. So great stuff you can find at a surplus store. So when I talked a little bit about Rachel before, who keeps a little snippets of her up here, of information of her life. One of the things I bought here was patches. So they have a really great a selection of patches, and I was able to find some cool ones for Scott. They have a lot of coins here. And if you were ever in the military, you get a lot of coins. People give you coins when you leave a command or you do something, get back from some kind of event, you get a coin for it. So I, Scott and I both have a lot of coins we need to display, but they also sell them here in case you're missing a coin from some kind of event or operation you were a part of that you didn't get a coin for. That's your grandfather, World War I, and that's your father, World War II. What did he do in the war? Father? Yes. He was uh, infantry. He was a radio man. Okay. And then your great grandfather? He was infantry. I don't know what awesome. his specialty was. And then is that your uncle? That's the uncle. Yeah. Huh? I see not in uniform there, but um, but I do have his uniform up. It says on the back, poison inside. So we thought it was a cyanide tablet inside and yeah. that you broke the glass, sure. but it's not. It was uh, used by paratroopers, and this is a uh, luminous material, and it was it went on the helmet so that they could see each other in the dark. Yes. Yeah, it took me a long time to figure that one out. That's very interesting. And then this is a, um, this is pretty rare. This is an armband that would have been worn by a paratrooper in World War II. Wow. And... So why they would wear that armband to show they were American? To show they were American. Uh huh. And then this is a map on cloth so that it you know it can get wet. Yep. That's interesting. Yeah, the paratroopers would have carried those too. Uh, yeah, this I was really excited to get these things. We we bought some collections and there was just so much cool stuff in them. Do Do you have any um, blood chips? No, no, I don't. Not any real ones, yeah. anyway. I've, I actually have one that I sewed into my leather jacket, <laughs> but it wasn't real. Yeah, it was so a really good fake. I never sewed. I, I never. I I carried around the cloth. The, they're not cloth. They're made of like you know, like a material. They're, that you can, sometimes they're silk, actually. It's like a. Wait a minute. It's I'm, almost like that paratrooper band. I didn't mean to interrupt yeah. you, but I do have something. This is similar. This is way, late World War II. It's a um, rayon blood chip. Yes. So yeah, I do have one. And then what's what's on the other side? Can I see the? Oh, other I, side? oh, I'm sorry. That's oh, okay. Oh, so so that's oh, I love this. Okay, so let me talk about this a little bit. So this is a blood chip, and you see how the language is a different language. It's because when you carry a blood chip, it's supposed to be. Usually the five most common languages of the country you're flying over. And it says something along the lines of, I'm an American, I am evading the enemy. If you help me, my country will compensate you for the amount of help you give me. If you can help get me to an embassy. And usually there's numbers on the blood chit that you can rip off or hand off or give to the whoever helps you. And if they take that to an embassy, they will be compensated for the amount of help they give to the uh, American trying to get back. So that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. That's, yeah. the, that's the problem. You forget about a lot of stuff. And that's when a you've cool got so much artifact. Stuff. Yeah, I thought it was. Yeah, I really like it. It awesome. belongs to me, actually. So, yeah, and that um, language on the back looks like it's like Russian. Russian. But if it's, it's World War II? Is and this is, a, it's late World War II, it's a type four. So honestly, it. there would be an ally at the time, so to help from them. Well, Russia would have been an ally. Yeah, yeah, then. yeah. So to even just to say it in Russian, so the Russian would know what to, what to do to help you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty neat. Awesome, well, thank uh, you. Sure.
When a jacket comes into you, what are you looking for specifically to, to keep it and to resell it? Well, first of all, we want something that we don't have already. Sure. And so we like to have some variety. And in the case of these uh, ceremonial and dress uniforms, the more brass and shiny and flashy, the better. Sure. And you get different kinds of customers for it. I mean, I'm sure people have seen people in rock bands and they're wearing that sort oh, of thing. Oh, yes, that's true. So this is a neat area with all the covers. So you'll hear me say that very often, cover, instead of hat or cap. In the military, it's called a cover, and I use that term because I'm just so used to saying it. But these are all different types of covers here. I saw some military, we'll talk about combination covers on the other side, and some of these are military-esque as well. But one of the things I noticed right, is um, they have aviator gloves. So this is what you wear when you fly, these gloves right here. Uh, leather gloves. Now, I say you wear when you fly. You should wear when you fly. I usually didn't wear them because I'd rather just uh, fly without gloves on. But you should wear these when you fly. And you should wear them when you fly because they are fire retardant. And that means that if you, if your fear cockpit catches on fire and you need to fly to save your lives, your hands aren't going to get burned. <laughs> There's somebody's like, I like, this like, this is, this is, this is no museum, this junk is for sale, but I love this one. Street girls bringing sailors into hotel must pay for room in advance. Important safety tip. <laughs> if you've ever been to port with sailors, that would make sense to you. <laughs> Tell me about these items here. You said they're not for sale. It's right, like it's one of the biggest conversation yeah, pieces we have in here. They've been here as long as I can remember and probably since our inception. What those are are they're mucklucks. They're made of polar bear fur that they, they would wear in like Alaska or, or further north to keep themselves warm. They were originally solid white. And oh, they've wow. been there so long, there's no way to clean them really. Yes. So now it looks a little old like they are. And uh, also what you're looking at in the center, those were World War II snowshoes, a military issue. So um, we're not selling those. Those are just something that people bring in their children and their grandchildren to see because they've been here so long. And how old do you think they are, what did you say? I well, know. they've been here since our inception. They have to be uh, so 40. 70 some years old. Wow. The uh, snowshoes are dated 1942. Wow, that's amazing. Very cool. I've used snowshoes modern day. They don't look like that, do they? <laughs> they don't look like that at all. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Sure. These yeah. are the mittens Bamboo on this side. Yeah. <laughs> and like Larry said, these were white at some point. They're made from polar bear fur? Correct. Oh my gosh. They used to have little claws on the bottom. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So as I leave the M&G uh, surplus store here in Norfolk, I just want to remind you these places are located all over the U.S. It's probably even one in your hometown. But if you're ever in Norfolk, come and visit this one. It's the big yellow building right on Granby Street. And come and see all the stuff they have in there. The great thing about surplus stores is even when you visit one, they're getting new stuff in all the time. So you might not, when you come back, you might not have seen the thing you saw before. So. Again, thank you for joining me on Walk With History today. Thank you for coming into the Surplus Store here in Norfolk, Virginia. And again, if you're ever here, come play Larry and Laura a visit. Thank you. On to my next Walk With History.